Are you ready? Are you ready for the thrill of victory? Are you ready to taste victory? Are you ready to take your sports betting to a whole new level? Sit up, put your feet on the floor, because we have work to do. Welcome to the grind. Welcome to Cappers Nation, your weekly all things sports betting show. Tune in live every Thursday at 8 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Let us make you a more successful sports better. Welcome to Cappers Nation, your weekly all things sports gambling show. I am your host, Kyle Johnson, coming to you live from our set here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Today is September 20th, Thursday, Thursday night football, guys. It's going to be a great night. Now, we did just give out a free play to everybody that tuned in live. If you missed it, here you go. Um, we took the Jets plus three and a half. Uh, it is one of our plays today. And you know what? It should be a winner. So uh, there's a free play for everybody to get you guys all started. That game starts in just six minutes. And uh, while we wait for other people to jump on, we're going to get rolling in this program. Today, guys, we've got a great show on tap. We're going to be breaking down Major League Baseball, the playoff races, who's in, who's out, and who's, uh, who's close. And who's fighting? All right, guys. We've got college football. We got the NFL. We got free plays. We're gonna be breaking down games in college football, uh, the NFL for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, including a bunch of free leans as well as free plays for you guys. Now, remember, we do go live on the weekends every Saturday and Sunday to break down college football on Saturdays, the NFL on Sundays. We go live at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. It is really bright and early uh, here on the West Coast. Uh, for all our West Coast viewers and myself being in Las Vegas, it is bright and early. I'm cranky uh, that early in the morning, but it's some of our best programs. Two hours, action-packed, free leans, game day breakdowns, and everything that you need to know to be a more successful sports better. I do thank you guys for tuning in, our loyal loyal viewers. Um, it is going to be a uh, hell of a day today. Uh, we got NFL getting ready to start in just five minutes. Uh, college football going off, as everybody just said. Game is tied 7-7. Seven to seven, End of the first quarter between Tulsa and Temple. And uh, today at Capper's Direct, guys, uh, we already started out the day on a great note. We gave out the Oakland A's minus $1.30 uh, on the money line as our first consensus play of the day. The last time I checked, they were winning 12-1. to one. So I don't know what the final score was, but I'm sure it was a winner. I'm sure somebody will post it in the comments for me to see. But I'm pretty sure we started out our consensus plays on the winning foot. We've got three more to go. I just gave you guys the Jets plus three and a half. Uh, as well as we did give you guys a free play on that football game in our video last night. We gave out Temple minus seven. Believe it or not, that is actually one of our premium plays. All right, guys, that is one of our three premium plays of the day. It was not a small consensus play. It was one of our bigger uh, premium plays, the biggest games that we offer. And hopefully... Temple pulls through. I've got a good feeling they will. Uh, appears that their second goal, looking like they're going to score. Holy smokes, the A's won 21-3. Thank you, uh, Lamont and David, for pointing that out. Uh, I love to hear that. I love to hear that, and that's why somebody said earlier, uh, the score of the A's, uh, they, they could have beat the Cleveland Browns tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I think that Browns game... Uh, it's going to surprise a lot of people, and there's going to be a bunch of scoring in that game. I, I do believe it. I know uh, both teams have their trouble. Uh, Sam Darnold, you know, he did show uh, uh, signs of improvement, even though he struggled to get in the end zone the first two weeks. Um, he's putting the ball up in the air, and he's connecting with receivers, and he's pretty accurate, too. Um, same thing with Tyrod Taylor. He's had his moments of, uh, uh, moments of goodness. I wouldn't say greatness, but goodness. Um, but we'll start breaking down that game here in just a bit. Uh, as well as, you know, on tap here at Capper's Direct, we had three premium plays today. Uh, the first one was in Major League Baseball. We gave out the Tampa Bay Rays minus $1.30 on the money line. They were down 2 nothing early. I do see that they are back tied 2-2. Two to two. Uh, Toronto's got a runner on first with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. So hopefully Tampa Bay uh, knocks in some more runs in... Uh, Puts another win in the win column for us and all of our premium play clients. Uh, then we had Temple minus seven as a big premium play for all of our premium play clients. We actually gave that one away free in our uh, daily video as well. So, uh, and then uh, we've got the over in uh, 
the Jets and Cleveland game. And then as far as consensus plays go, uh, obviously we had the winner, like they just pointed out, 21-3, to the Oakland A's uh, at home against the LA Angels. And uh, second one that we have on tap was the New York Mets and the Washington Nationals over eight runs. Uh, end of the fourth right now, Mets are leading three to nothing. And uh, hopefully that game goes over as well. Uh, and then uh, another consensus play that we gave out was the over fi uh, 53 and a half in the college football game. Uh, 21 points so far. Uh, looking good as long as they keep scoring. And hopefully it's Temple that keeps scoring. Uh, and then, of course, the Jets plus three and a half. Jets, Jets, Jets today. Sam Darnold. I promise you we did not take that one just because I'm a Sam Darnold fan. All right? I promise you we did not take that just because I'm a Sam Darnold fan. So, with that being said, we need to talk a little bit of business here, and then we're going to get going. Um, but first... But first... We're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing over at Cappers Direct and what we got going on this week. Um, we're still running it. We're, run, we're running it for the rest of the week. It is our new client special. If you have never been with us, if you've never bet our premium plays or our system plays, here's your opportunity to start banging your book and uh, really hammer them. And we're giving you guys a great deal. You get one week of our premium plays, one week of our system plays. Normally $1,000 a week for our premium plays, uh, $600 a week for our system plays. We're giving it to you guys for just $299. All right, guys, you guys get that special for $299. The only way to get that is you have to call into the office. You have to call the 888-561-8923 number. You have to ask for myself, Kyle, and I will hook you up and get you on both of those. All right? Now, um, we also have our system plays on sale this week. The uh, the special is actually not on the website. It will be on the website later tonight. Our IT department will post that on the website. Uh, if I knew how to do it myself, I would do it for you guys. But unfortunately, me and IT work just don't go hand in hand. So um, you're going to be able to get premium plays for the week. One full week of our premium plays for just $199 uh, to try them out, guys. There's not much time left uh, between the regular season and the playoffs. We're 72-3. and three. Guys, our, our system plays are 72-3. and three, And hopefully... We're able to cash in on, on on a couple more today that we got going. We got some that started today. We've got three system plays uh, that are going right now. We've got some more starting tomorrow on Friday. Um, but if you guys want to try out our system plays, there's no better time than right now. All right, we've knocked out 22 straight, and we're going to keep that uh, number going. All right, um, but you can try them for the week, 199 for a week. They're normally 600 bucks, or you can get a whole month, which will basically cover you almost through the end of the World Series. Uh, for $7.49, all right, guys? Uh, and matter of fact, if you guys do that today or tomorrow, or actually by the end of the week, if you guys purchase one month of our system plays, I will give you the rest of the World Series, the playoffs in the World Series, absolutely free. All right, guys? All right, guys, those sales will end on Sunday at midnight. And remember, Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, we will be live breaking down everything college football, all right? As well as Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, we'll be breaking everything down in the NFL and making you a more successful sports better. All right, guys, so make sure you guys tune in live over the weekend. They will be great programs, all right? Now, let's jump right into this NFL game. We just gave you guys the Jets plus three and a half uh, as a nice free consensus play. Now, this is what I was hoping to do about 20 minutes ago, but unfortunately, we're running late, so let's start breaking down the game, all right? Jets versus the Browns in Cleveland, Ohio at First Energy Stadium. Game is getting ready to kick off game 301 and 302 for betting purposes. Line on that game opened up at three and a half, favoring the Cleveland Browns, where that line sat uh, pretty much uh, for the whole week. Um, this morning I seen it down to minus three, but they had it at uh, minus $1.20, and then it went back to minus three and a half, favoring the Browns. Um, and for the most part, it's at minus three, minus $1.20. Uh, the Westgate's got it at minus three, minus $1.35. They're afraid to give that extra half a point to the Jets, um, which I don't blame them today. All right. Um, Cleveland. Let's see here. All right. Uh, the Jets are one and one straight up, one and one against the spread. The Browns are 0 1 and 1 
and 2 and 0 against the spread and they could be very I mean they very very easily be 2 and 0 uh straight up to start the year if they actually had a decent kicker. Um some top team trends going on in that game. The Jets are 6 0 and 1 against the spread their last 7 games on the road against poor teams with a winning percentage of less than 20%. Yes, Lamont, I will be live Saturday and Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Saturday and Sunday, every Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We break down college football and the NFL. And thank you, Brian, for pointing that out. Um, back to the top team trends between the Jets and the Browns. Cleveland is 12 and 36 and 2 against the spread, dating back their last 50 games against fortunate teams with a turnover differential of better than plus 0.3 turnovers per game. All right, Cleveland is just. 10-0 on the under. Their last 10 games at home when they're facing an opponent after a straight-up loss. All right? 10-0 on the under after facing an opponent of a straight up, who, uh, who had a straight-up loss. Now, head-to-head -head trends. The favorites are 9-1 straight up and against the spread in the last 10 games between the Jets and the Browns in their head-to-head -head series. So the favorites have covered nine out of the last 10 times. However, I don't believe that's going to be the trend today. All right, guys, I don't believe that's going to be the trend today. And uh, we'll get into that here in a little bit. Now, I do anticipate a fun program today. I do anticipate some uh, rowdy comments from the, uh, the viewers and the crowds. Uh, we've been getting a lot of trolls uh, the last couple weeks. So I do expect some of that today and uh we'll deal with it as it comes in all right guys um now head-to-head -head matchup last year october 8 2017 uh the jets same scenario went to cleveland beat cleveland beat the browns 17 to 14 all right 17 to 14 the year prior than that end of october in 2016 the jets again got the best of Cleveland, winning 31-28. to So the last two matchups have all been decided by three points with the Jets winning outright, all right? The road teams have won their last two meetings. However, the favorite has won the last two times. Um, but uh, the Jets were favored last year and the year before, but they are not this year. They are getting points. I personally think uh, the Jets are are the better team. Um, they are the well-rounded team. However, we're going to find out soon. Well, JSN, I don't like Cleveland. You got it, Lamont. We'll chat with you later. Thanks for tuning in so far. All right, guys. Rookie Sam Darnold suffered his first career loss last week, uh, losing to Miami 20-12. The last time the Browns actually won a game, Sam Darnold was a sophomore at USC. Uh, no doubt Cleveland is a much improved team this season, uh, and they could easily be 2-0, as I said earlier, if it wasn't for poor kicking. All right, the Browns winless. Uh, the Browns are winless in their last 19 games, and they sit a three-and-a-half point favorite uh, entering tonight. Um, the Cleveland defense, they're going to do their best uh, to keep the deep game in check uh, against Sam Darnold and uh, keep it close just like they did the last two times the Jets came to town. Uh, like I said earlier, the last two years the Jets came to town. The Jets traveled to uh, Cleveland and they won by three points exactly in both games. Um, Tyrod Taylor, he's had his moments uh, of goodness. I won't say it's greatness because it's just not greatness, all right? Um, in, in both of his first two games, he's shown sign of promise. Uh, towards the end of their first game of the year, as well as uh, last week. Um, the Browns shipped Josh Gordon to New England, um, or got rid of him anyways. Um, the Cleveland run game with Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson uh, is going to be extremely important uh, to keeping the Blitz happy defense of the Jets, or Jets <laughs> at the Jets at bay. Um Kyle, do I ever watch the games as a comment, as a question? Absolutely, I do. Unfortunately, Capper's Nation uh, live is every Thursday at 5 o'clock, my time. So right in the middle of game day, I am here live with you guys. Um, 
So unfortunately, I don't get to watch the game until the uh, till the program's over. So I do have a bunch of TVs hanging on the wall in my office and uh, all day Saturday and Sunday when I'm working, I'm watching. Um, no, JSN, I'm not watching the game right now. We do not have, actually we do have a TV in the studio. Maybe we should put the game on there, but then I won't be talking and reading. I'll be watching and seeing what's going on and rooting on the Jets and whatnot and whatever, whatever, whatever. And uh, we won't get anything productive done. So, no, I think the ADD will kick in and I won't be able to uh, watch the game live while filming the live show. So, we'll leave it at that and then... Uh, But I will watch the games uh, when I'm done. I try not to watch the games, but I do. You know, it is what it is. Um, adds the added stress value. And, you know, once you make a bet, it's over and done with. And there's nothing you can do about it other than uh, hope you picked correctly and hope you did your homework. So, you know, sometimes I watch. Uh, I'll, if there's a. If I got games to pick and choose from, I'll end up watching games that we didn't bet on, you know, on, on like game day Saturday. That's what I prefer anyways. Brian, absolutely not. No preseason. No preseason. We don't bet the preseason. Hey, Glenn, it's all right, buddy. Glenn, not a problem. All right, guys, if this game, go, uh, if the game between the Jets and the Browns comes down to the special teams... The Jets definitely have the advantage hands down when it comes to special teams. Um, and as noted earlier, I did give you guys a free play on the Jets, plus three and a half. And uh, we're going to continue our Major League Baseball segment a little bit farther in the program. That was something I tried to get done before the game actually started. Unfortunately, here we are. Um, but we'll jump back in the NFL here shortly. We're going to jump right into Major League Baseball, run through that. And uh, then get you guys into some college football. Great to hear you bet on some uh, on the Florida Panther Panthers and uh, made some easy money. How about that Detroit Tigers game? Nine to th nine to five, bottom of the third. Fourteen runs total so far. Uh, the bats are cracking in Major League Baseball today. Who's hot? Who's not? Who should you be betting on? And who should you be fading? All right, guys, we're about to give you guys some valuable insight and a few tips today that should help you be a more successful sports better. Uh, if you tuned into last week's program, then we were profitable yet again. Not by much in our fade list, but it was on the profitable side. Going 28 and 25, not the best of record um, for our fade list, but it kept us in the green as well as bringing our six-week fade total to 153 wins and 91 losses on our side. All right, guys. Last week, we saw, uh, we said to fade uh, Baltimore, the Royals, uh, the Padres, the Tigers, uh, the Marlins, the Pirates, the Mets, and the Mariners. The Mariners and the Pirates were the only ones burning us, going 5-1 and 5-2, and and respectfully. Um, Baltimore went 3-4. and four. Uh, we made a little cheese there. The Royals went three and four, made just a little bit of cheese there. The Padres went uh, two and four, we made uh, some decent money there. Same thing with the Tigers going two and four, uh, as well as the Marlins going two and four, and then the Mets went three and four. So uh, overall nine, or sorry, overall one hundred and fifty three and ninety one, uh, and over the last six weeks. So if you're watching our fade list, if you're paying attention to our fade list. You should be making money. All righty, guys. Now, what we're going to do is jump right into our Major League Baseball playoff race, and we're going to see what's going on in baseball as if it was going to end today. All right, in the AL East, leading the AL East in first, obviously, is the Boston Red Sox, who can clinch the, clinch the division with a win 
in Yankee Stadium tonight. And as I check right now, it's bottom of the third. It's very, very early. But they are winning 4-2. to two. Hopefully the Yankees pull it off, clinch the division, and do it right in front of all the Yankee fans. I'd find nothing better than that. As the Red Sox is one of our plays. All right, guys. How's the feed and the volume over there for everybody? Feed and the volume, fine. Because it's a little spotty on my end. All right, good. Good to know it's good. We're going to continue on. I do think that uh, people are going to be missing some viewers today just for the fact that, one, we're not broadcasting it. Uh, for some reason, it was supposed to broadcast on all the networks and, and the channels, or sorry, websites that we broadcast on. And unfortunately, they did not send out the link, and uh, it did not get put on those. So it's okay. Uh, hopefully, uh, some more people start joining in. Um, I'm sure... Uh, both with the college football game and the NFL game starting. Uh, most people will be stuck to their televisions watching both of those games. But I'm sure as they start losing, they'll start searching. whatever Whoever they bet on and whatever the way the games are going, I'm sure they're going to start searching and uh, looking for a way to make up their money and uh, hopefully tune into our program. Um, but in first, uh, in the AL East, uh, Boston Red Sox, uh, as of right now, before today's game, with a record of 103 wins and 49 losses, the New York Yankees sit nine and a half games back. The AL Central, Cleveland wrapped it up, clinched their division uh, with a record of 85 wins and 66 losses. Uh, and in the AL West, the Houston Astros are in first with a record of 95 and 57. Uh, the Oakland A's sit uh, just three and a half games back. Uh, Seattle is 11 games back. And then in the American League playoff race overall, all right, as of right now, the Red Sox are in. They've clinched the playoff spot. All right, and if they win today, they clinch the divisions. David's watching the Reds, the Indians, the Temple, and the Jets all at once. That's what I'm talking about. Um, it's, if, if the season was to end today, the Astros are also in. And the, Cle uh, the Cleveland Indians are automatically in because they clinched their division. Sitting in a wild card spot, the New York Yankees, with a two and a half game lead over the Oakland A's, who filled the wild card spot, the last wild card spot as of right now. Uh, Tampa Bay is sitting five and a half games back, uh, sitting out of a wild card spot, looking in. And then Seattle, seven games back, looking in. All right. Now, wrapping up the uh, National League division, uh, the NL East, a race that can be clinched very shortly. Uh, the Atlanta Braves sitting in first with a record of 84 and 68. They just started a four-game series against the Philadelphia Phillies, uh, who happen to be sitting five and a half games back. And uh, if they win that series, most doubtedly, they will clinch their division as well. Uh, as I look right now, Atlanta is leading top of the third two to one. Uh, and Washington is also seven games back in uh, the NL East. Brian, I don't know if it was pass interference because, unfortunately, I don't have uh, the game on in here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to change that here. Uh, now, in the NL Central, the Chicago Cubs are in first with a record of 89 wins and 63 losses. The Milwaukee Brewers sit two and a half games back, as well as the St. Louis Cardinals sit five and a half games back as well. In the NL West, the hot contested National League West Division. The Los Angeles Dodgers, who started at the bottom, and now they're here, sit at the top with a record of 85 wins and 68 losses after single-handedly knocking the Rockies out of first place in the NL West. All right? Colorado Rockies are sitting two and a half games back in the division, who are still out of their entire franchise history chasing a division title. Um... The Diamondbacks are six games back, and you know what? It's just not looking good for the Diamondbacks to make the playoffs or wild card spot this year. 
Um, if the if the baseball was to end today, if the regular season was to end right now, the Chicago Cubs are in, the Dodgers are in, and the Atlanta Braves are in. Sitting in a wild card spot is the Milwaukee Brewers with a three game lead over the second wild card team, the St. Louis Cardinals. Just one and a half games back from the Cardinals would be the Colorado Rockies. Um, and right back from there is the Philadelphia Phillies, five games back, as well as Arizona, five games back from a wild card spot. Uh, and then uh, the Pittsburgh Pirates are six games back from a wild card spot. And then the Washington Nationals are just six and a half games back. Um, Brian just asked, Will the books hang a line on where Harper goes? I'm sure uh, an offshore book will. Maybe this uh, super book will. The, the Westgate, possible. Um, they do throw up a lot of crazy lines. William Hill might. CG Technologies might. You never know. Might be a popular one to bet. Um, the teams we like to fade. Our fade list for today. For this next week. Alrighty. Sorry. I was reading something. All right. Let's get our fade list rolling. The teams we like to fade this next week are the Baltimore Orioles, the Kansas City Royals, the Detroit Tigers. The Toronto Blue Jays. The LA Angels against Oakland and Houston only. The Texas Rangers against Seattle and the LA Angels. The San Francisco Giants against the St. Louis Cardinals and the San Diego Padres against the LA Dodgers. A fade is when we're betting against a team. Somebody just asked, what is a fade? A fade is when we're betting against a certain team. And our fade list has an impeccable record dating back the last six weeks. We are 153 and 91 on our fade list. Baltimore, Kansas City, Detroit, Toronto, the LA Angels, the Texas Rangers, the San Francisco Giants, and the Padres. Let me put those in the comments. One second, guys. We'll put this in the comments here. All right, so we just posted the fade list for everybody. Absolutely, as David pointed out, if you're not sure who's going to be playing and who's not, as far as uh, minor league players getting a chance up in the big leagues, betting Major League Baseball the last week, week and a half, can be very, very, very deadly to your bankroll. So make sure you're betting with people that know what they're doing. Now, moving forward, somebody give me a Tulsa and Temple update, please, while I get everything mo uh, going moving forward here.
We do have a free play for everybody for tomorrow in Major League Baseball between the Chicago Cubs and the Chicago White Sox. Free play, the Cubs on the money line. Um, I've seen it minus $1.50 so far. I expect it to go up, and I expect it to be higher. That's for tomorrow, for Friday. The Cubs, minus $1.50. Thank you, everybody, for that update, 14-7. to 7. Hopefully, Temple starts scoring some more. All right, Tampa Bay just took the lead, 3-2, to two, with runners on first and second. Uh, one out in the uh, top of the six, and hopefully Tampa pulls away and knocks in some more runs because that is our first big premium play of the day. And with that, coming up very, very shortly, we've got information about BetterX after dunking off 100K on the Houston Texans last week. He is back at it again. BetterX is back at it again, guys, and uh, we're going to go over that here shortly. As well as we got information coming up. On some major breaking news about the FanDuel Sportsbook uh, at the Meadowlands Racetrack about them denying a bet of a winning ticket of over $82,000 in our Real Talk segment. And then we're going to jump into college football and then the NFL. But first, enjoy this short 40-second break. All right, we are back. Jumping right into some real talk. Now, if you guys paid attention to ESPN or watch any other information or on Twitter, uh, if you follow me on Twitter at Cap Nation Kyle, I've been posting about this uh, for a while now. Monday Night Football, Raiders and the Broncos. Um, a better by the name of Anthony Prince, who identified himself to... Uh, the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands Racetrack in New Jersey uh, walked up to the window late in the game. In-game wagering, there was an option to bet on the Broncos to win outright while they were losing 19-7 to at plus 750 to 1. That lasted 18 seconds. The line was live for 18 seconds. Mr. Anthony Prince walked up to the window and he placed a bet for $110 to win over $82,000. And not one person at that window at that window questioned that bet, asked for approval of that bet. They took Mr. Prince's money happily, handed him a ticket, as well as numerous other tickets that they had. And they let Mr. Prince go on his way. $110 to win over $82,000 plus whatever it was, 750,000 or whatever it was, 750 to one guys. Well, Denver won the game. Field goal later, Denver wins. And uh, they refused to pay him. They said it was, uh, that line was made in error and they didn't have to pay him. Um, but instead, they offered him $500 and three tickets, three sets of tickets to New York Jets home game, or sorry, New York Giants home games. Mr. Prince refused, lawyered up, 
and said he was going to sue and contact the New Jersey Gaming Control Board. Have any of you guys heard of this story so far? Um, it's actually been going down uh, today, basically every day. And uh, good and bad. My take on it is we as bettors, when we go to the sports book and we bet our tickets or we bet our games, they give us our ticket. It's our responsibility to look at that ticket before we leave the window to make sure that if you want to take the Jets plus three and a half, that your ticket says the Jets plus three and a half. Uh, I had a live video or I posted a video a couple weeks ago. We did. I showed it live over the weekend uh, where I was betting. And I wanted to actually make a change after it was uh, the guy put it in the computer. Um, I've done this numerous times where you bet the, you know, you say the wrong number. You go up there thinking you want 352 and you say 452 or 357, whatever, because you look up at the last minute and uh, you're rushed. You know, there's a long line of people and you're in a hurry to get your bet down. But it's your responsibility as a better to look at your ticket to make sure it's correct. And if we make a mistake as a sports better and we go up to the window after the fact, and say, hey, Mr. Sportsbook Director, I really meant to bet the Browns, but I accidentally bet the Jets. Or I said the Browns, but your guy put in the Jets. Whatever the case may be, that Sportsbook Director is going to say, so sorry, Charlie. Tickets go as written. So in this case, the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands track said, we made this an error, we don't have to pay you, and we're not going to pay you. Whereas most sports books here in Vegas would have already paid the guy knowing that they're going to lose. Anytime that there's a big error like that, the casinos here in Vegas automatically are going to call the game control board and turn it over to the control board to see if they have to pay. But a lot of the books like the Westgate won't necessarily uh, send it to the control board. They're just going to pay it because they know they're going to have to pay it. Tickets go as written. And uh, Patty Poker, who is the owner of FanDuel over in, you know, the UK, they have been known to pay pay out for their errors multiple times. But as you guys know, and this has happened to me because I actually have a five dimes account. I have many uh, betting accounts, uh, both here in Vegas, uh, offshore, everywhere. Because I'm not always in Las Vegas. I do a ton of traveling. So I have to be able to uh, be prepared to bet, you know, in multiple places. Um, and uh, sorry, reading the comments. And I've had it where I've bet in-game wagering on five dimes and they've canceled my bet after it's been a winner by saying it was an error. Or they leave the line up too long, and you bet it, and then the, while the game's already going, you try and take advantage of a line. If that happens in a Nevada sports book, they're going to pay you. 100% they're going to pay you because it's their mistake. And they'll pay you same day. And... Five dimes to me multiple times has refused to pay, and they'll say, nope, it was our mistake, you know, and we reserve, uh, the tickets are canceled when we make a mistake. But if we lose, they're going to take our money anyways. So uh, FanDuel Sportsbook said, nope, we're not paying you. And uh, however, they res uh, reversed their course today after this guy lawyered up, knowing that they're going to lose anyways, um, in my opinion. Uh, it was before this, but FanDuel fessed up. They paid the guy the full amount today, eighty-two thousand um, dollars and change. However, generally, what happens is, is they will tell you uh, here in Vegas if the Westgate was to do this or the Aria or William Hill. Okay, we're going to pay you, sir, your eighty-two thousand dollars, but you're going to be blacklisted from betting in our casino again. Hmm. You're going to give me $82,000 and you're going to tell me I can't bet in this casino again, but I can go to the one right next door. Take it every time. Now, part of me wants to think that this guy took advantage of the situation 
Maybe it was an inside job. Maybe he had a friend send him a text message. All right, use a, a, a burner account. I'm going to go uh, at the end of the game. It's going to last 18 seconds. Stand by the window. Plus 750 to 1. You know, uh, who knows what the case may be, what the error and the mistake may be. We will probably never know. But it's good to see FanDuel Sportsbook reverse their, uh, their take on the situation and pay the guy. Regardless if the guy did it on purpose or not. But that he bet $110 at plus, seven, uh, plus 750 to 1 makes me think that he didn't really know what he was betting. Um, he probably thought he was betting 100, you know, 110 to win 100. And it just so happens it was 110 to win over $82,000. So, uh, congratulations to Mr. Anthony Prince. If you are watching this or you watch this archived, please do reach out to us. We'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear how it all went down. I'd love to hear when you not noticed that uh, you had an $82,000 ticket. All right, so now that FanDuel paid him, let's move right on. Better X has added again. Uh, somebody asked, uh, has he lost the last couple weeks? Um, overall, he's a winning better at, at the William Hill Books. Ed Bogdanovich confirmed that uh, live on another program uh, earlier in the week that uh, Mr. Better X, Mr. Duffelbag Boy, is a lifetime winner at their sports book which is pretty impressive I know him personally he's a very sharp individual sorry reading some uh, comments here Gary said, I had to bet with Bodog to go a year ago, $100, bet on a 17 parlay to win 17000 took six months to get paid. Damn, Gary, but they actually paid you? You know, I've never heard... anything good about Bodog. I've never heard anything good about Bodog over the years. Years ago, yes, but then they had their issues. And I haven't heard anything good since, but that's good to know that you got paid, even though it took six months. I bet it was a battle. How long did it take you to cash out? Good to know that uh, the Jets are still covering the spread zero to zero. Uh, but there's no scoring in that game. And uh, Temple is leading 21-7. to seven. Is that at halftime, guys, or is that... Uh... Still going. Is that the half? Thank you, Hootie by Night. I do appreciate it. Guys, if you're not following me on Twitter, please do follow me on Twitter at CapNationKyle. It is rather sad. I have no... No followers on Twitter. I'm begging you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, I post a lot of free stuff on Twitter. Uh, if you guys watch Sunday Night Football, I posted uh, some free live wagering. Uh, I gave out the uh, Steelers plus 14 live in-game wagering. And uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you guys are going to see a lot of information and uh, a lot of free stuff. A lot of free stuff that goes down on Twitter that you guys don't get to see here. 
yes, Hootie by Nights there. Uh, he actually shares some of the stuff that I post and uh, whatnot there. But guys, make sure you follow me on Twitter. Follow Cappers Direct at Twitter at Cappers Direct LV and myself at Cap Nation Kyle. A lot of great information, a lot of great free plays that you guys won't find in our videos. What uh how much time left in and what quarter is that Jets game? All right, guys, we're going to jump. All right, guys, if you're looking to get your company notice, it doesn't matter if it's another sports service, an offshore sports book. Uh, maybe you're a marijuana company, alcohol company. Maybe you got a local uh, cleaners here in Las Vegas. It doesn't matter what it may be. Uh, we've got some big advertising opportunities for you. If you want to get major exposure for your company, just send us an email to cd at cappersdirect.com. And we will take care of you. All right, guys. Reading comments, reading some stuff that's going on. All right, some little updates going on. Tampa Bay is still leading 3-2. to two. The Red Sox trying to clinch the division, leading 4-2. to two. However, the Yankees got runners on first and second, bottom of the fourth. Uh, Gary Betterex is at it again. Um, he is going to be, he has actually not made any wagers um, since I talked to him yet. Um, but he will be in the casinos tomorrow. I will be talking to him tomorrow. I'm actually going to be having lunch with him tomorrow. I will see the tickets. I'm going to do my best to get copies of those tickets if he allows me to, to post them live on the show on Saturday morning. But guys, if you want to know what Betterex is betting this weekend, uh, tune in live Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. We will go over everything Better X has in store for Saturday. All right, guys. Uh, it's going to be uh, a great weekend coming up. So make sure you guys participate in our live show. Hootie by Night, I have no idea. I will know tomorrow after I talk to him and uh, after I see him. But he usually hammers uh, college college football, that's for sure. Absolutely, Brian. He's uh, a lifetime winner uh, at the uh, William Hill Sportsbook. And uh, it's only a matter of time before he cashes in. <laughs> oh, boy. The comments. What's up with so-and-so talking shit, excuse my language, about you yesterday saying you blow up? You blowing up their YouTube. All right. I've heard this a few times today. We will address this very, very shortly because I really don't want to give these ding-dongs any type of day, time of day or uh, promotion on our show. But... I've heard it from a few people already, clients, that so-and-so wants to say that I'm making fake accounts and posting on their YouTube. First of all, 100% false. I don't have that much time in the day, nor do I really give a shit about them. Um, I wish them well. That's all I can say uh, you know, about them. We've proven over and over and over again that these same ding-dongs were the ones that were posting comments. I posted it when they were in, stationed in Iraq, posting comments on our live show, like 54 comments under like 
what was it, seven or eight different fake accounts. So the only one with fake accounts is these ding dongs. Uh, as well as they sell their leads. There we go. Jets touchdown. That's what I like to hear. Uh, they sell your leads to a guy up in upstate New York named Joe. As well as sending your information now to Doc Sports. So I'm sure you're getting blown up by Doc. Well, Doc's son anyways, because Doc is dead. So, but anyways, no. I don't have that much time in the day. So, uh, to anybody who's saying that, get a life. Start actually betting your own games. Throw a sack of balls and put some money on it. And actually show the betting world that you actually bet your own games. Not double-siding the games because you give out one side and uh, your buddy in the in the room next to you, in your dorm room next sorry, your barracks next to you is, uh, you know, giving the opposite side. Uh-oh, the Yankees got bases loaded with two outs. Bottom of the fourth. Hopefully the Red Sox uh, get out of that jam. Atlanta's tied 3-3. Three to three. As uh, Glenn just pointed out, Temple is up by 11 at the half. 21-10, 31 first half points. That over is looking... Uh, is uh, looking pretty good. 31 first half points. And uh, with a total of 53 and a half. Um, we'll take it. We'll take 31 first half points. Gary, tell us how you really feel about them. Uh, I'd love to hear it. And in the NFL, our Jets are leading 7 to nothing to start off the second quarter with Isaiah Crawwell... Seven-yard TD run. All right, guys. Uh, Sam Darnold is three of seven for just 22 yards. Tyrod Taylor is even worse. One of seven with just two yards uh, passing right now. Um, man, I wish I was watching that game. Any turnovers in that uh, NFL game so far? As I'm looking, I see no turnovers. Uh, just some sloppy play from what I can see. Um, but let's jump right into college football. Week four of college football is here, guys, and I could not be more excited. Uh, the AP Top 10, let's run it down real quick. Number one, Alabama. This week is uh, got Texas A&M at home. Jay Murphy, good question. Who's getting upset this weekend? Who's getting upset this weekend? Possibly Stanford. Possibly Notre Dame. We'll put those two on an upset alert early. But uh, number one, Alabama at home against a 22nd ranked Texas A&M team. Uh, Alabama is laying 26 on the road. Number two, Georgia is facing off against Missouri in Missouri. Georgia's laying two touchdowns. I look forward to seeing uh, just how good Missouri is and just how good Georgia is and see if they can hang on the road as well. Uh, number three, Clemson is facing off against Georgia Tech in Georgia. Uh, Clemson is laying just over two touchdowns with a line of minus 15. Number four, Ohio State has Tulane at home, laying 37 points at home. Uh, Oklahoma is heading to face Army. Uh, the number five team, Oklahoma, is laying 31 points on the road against Army. Uh, number six, LSU has Louisiana Tech at home. LSU is laying just under three touchdowns at minus 20 and a half. Number seven, Stanford on the road against number 20, Oregon. Stanford is laying two on the road. Uh, number eight, Notre Dame visiting Wake Forest. Notre Dame struggling in their first three games. Yes, they are 3-0. and However, they have won all three games by less then eight points. Uh, Notre Dame is laying a touchdown on the road against Wake Forest. Uh, number nine, Auburn has Arkansas at home. Auburn is laying 30 at home. And then number 10, there's a tie for 10, the first team in 10. Uh, Penn State heading on the road against Illinois, laying 27 and a half, just under four touchdowns. And then number 10, Washington has Arizona State at home, 
after they just take a, took a road loss to San Diego State last week, a very close game. Uh, Washington laying 17 and a half points on the road. Uh, I look forward to watching some very, very, very key games um, this week. Number two, Georgia versus Missouri. Uh, Kansas State versus number 12, West Virginia. Obviously, everybody knows I'm a big West, uh, West Virginia fan. Actually, not really a West Virginia fan, but this year I gave them out to win the national, or sorry, to win the Big 12 uh, at plus 1,200. And uh, hopefully uh, they keep doing what they're doing and trending upwards. And I look forward to seeing uh, West Virginia progress uh, throughout the year. They are ranked 12th already. The third game that I look forward to watching, number 17, TCU uh, against Texas. Guys, the odds makers, the public is giving Texas absolutely no love. All right. I've already talked to a few sharps who plan on betting Texas. And uh, the sharps are going to be giving Texas quite a bit of love this Saturday. And maybe you should tune in Saturday morning to find out why. Saturday morning, Capper's Nation Live. You'll want to tune in while we break down that Texas and uh, TCU game. 17th ranked TCU uh, is getting all the props in that game. Uh, and uh, Texas, after dismantling my U uh, USC Trojans last week, no love. No love. Um, and then the, the fourth game that I look forward to watching is Texas Tech versus number 15, Oklahoma State. And then to wrap up College Game Day Saturday, I look forward to watching number seven Stanford face off against number 20 Oregon. That game, uh, let's just put uh, Stanford on upset alert already. Now, Brian just asked, what's the, big, uh, the biggest spread you wager a favorite? College football's a, a lot different than the NFL for wager and a favorite. Um, I bet some favorites in college football, minus 38. I think I bet a minus 41 once. Oh, God, who was it? I think it was Alabama a couple years ago. I forget who they were playing, but I've wagered minus 41, uh, ridiculously large spreads, but I personally don't really like it. Um, like betting uh, the big spreads, but, um, we will see, you know, throughout the year what I do with the big spreads. But for uh, Brian to answer your question, uh, I really, or actually you don't like, you didn't ask it, but uh, I have bet big spreads, but I, I don't like to. I don't like to. Anything more than four or five touchdowns is a huge, huge spread. And uh, in a game where college kids are playing, anything can happen. All right, let's start breaking down some games. How about tomorrow night, Friday, revenge game. Washington State heads to the LA Memorial Coliseum to face off against my USC Trojans. I promise you, the lean I give you on this game is not based on USC being my favorite college. All right, that I promise. All right, sorry, I got to get a little score update here. The Jets got the ball leading 7 to nothing. Sam Darnold is just 3 of 8. Still half time in the Temple game and in Major League Baseball. Holy sheets. The Yankees take the lead after a Stanton Grand Slam. It's 35th home run of the year. Glenn, that is not what I want to see. The Yankees leading 6-4. to four. Barf. Big pit in my stomach right now. Tampa Bay, runners on first and third. No outs, top of the seventh. Lead 3-2. to two. And uh, that big premium play. We should def I mean, we could definitely use a few extra uh, runs for insurance. Looking down... Detroit and Kansas City is now 9-7. to seven. End of the 5th. End of the 4th in the Atlanta game. They're tied up 3-3. Three to three. And if you're tuning in late, our Oakland A's, as a consensus play, beat the LA Angels 21-3. The Oakland was actually our free play on Wednesday night. And uh, we rolled with them again today. Yes, Glenn, we definitely need Tampa Bay. And, you know, a base hit here would really be nice to knock in some more runs. 
Um, but let's get back to the college football breakdown of the Washington State facing off against my USC Trojans in L.A. 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 here on the West Coast. Uh, game will be televised on ESPN. Game 309 and 310 for betting purposes. A line opened up with USC being a three, or sorry, four and a half point favorite. Uh, as of just starting to film this, they were still sitting at four and a half points favoring. Uh, total opened up at 52 and uh, is currently down to 51. Washington State, 3-0 and straight up, 3-0 and against the spread. Uh, definitely surprising sharps, definitely surprising betters after there wasn't much uh, positive outlook for Washington State this year with their uh, uh, top-level quarterback going to the NFL this last year. Uh, USC sits 1-2 and two straight up, 0-3 oh against the spread. Um, you know, and wait till you hear some of these statistics, and we're actually going against the statistics here, all right? Uh, Washington State is just 20 or is 26 and 9 against the spread, dating back to the year 2000 against weak rushing defenses yielding more than five yards per carry. Um, USC is just 2 and 7 against the spread their last three years in September. Uh, USC is 12, 2 and 1 on the under their last 15 games against non ranked teams. Head to head trends. Under the total is 4 0 in the last four games between USC and Washington State. All right, the last four games have gone under. Um, now, uh, last year, there was a total of 59. Washington State upset USC 30-27 to in uh, Washington. Um, last year, or sorry, the year prior that the that they played was gonna was uh, much farther back in 2014, where USC absolutely smashed Washington State 44-17 on the road. And uh, 2014 USC was a much different team than we find this year. Revenge game alert for tomorrow. Uh, USC got beat last year. The players still on the team. The coach, they feel it. They know it. And uh, they had a nasty loss last week against Texas. And uh, after opening up a 14-3 lead to start the game, then they just fell flat. All right. Um, the Trojans came out and just uh, uh, lit the world on fire to start the game, had a 14-3 lead, and then it was like a whole different team showed up. The, uh, the team that we saw in the first quarter, they left. And the team we saw against Stanford showed up in the second quarter, third, and the fourth. And uh, obviously, USC ended up uh, losing uh, that game against Texas last week. Uh, Washington State beat USC last year in Washington, 30 to 27 as a four and a half point home team dog. All right, the game went under the total of 59. Uh, four and one in the under their last five meetings. All right, road teams have won four of the last five meetings as well. Uh, USC head coach uh, Clay Hilton. We're gonna call him the Bubble Boy. He is on the chopping block to probably be the first coach in college football to lose their job this year. Um, just 28 and 12 overall record. USC is uh, 14 and three against the spread. Their last 17 games under Coach Clay Hilton, and their own three against the spread this season. All right, uh, Washington State took care uh, of Eastern Washington last week, winning 59 to 24. But what's more impressive is considering that Eastern Washington was leading uh, all of the the FBS with 623 yards per game on offense. Um, USC, let's look at some stats for USC and Washington State. Uh, USC is averaging 274 yards per game uh, passing as well as 109 yards on the ground. Washington State averaging much more in the air at 420 yards per game and just 80 on the ground. Uh, the USC defense has been holding teams to just 171 yards uh, uh, per game in the air, uh, but giving up over 209 yards a game on the ground. Luckily for them, Tomorrow night, uh, Washington is only averaging 80 yards a game rushing. Okay, uh, Washington, uh, Washington State defense has been uh, giving up 133 yards per game in the air and 96 on the ground. All right, guys. Now, free lean for tomorrow. Not an official free play as of yet, but a lean on USC minus four and a half. I have to see where that line goes tomorrow. 
to make sure I bet it. If it goes any higher than that, I'm not sure I bet it. Um, although I do think uh, USC, after suffering two big losses to both Stanford and Texas, they're going to come back at home at the Memorial Coliseum and make a huge statement tomorrow night. No doubt about it. Uh, Coach Clay Helton wants to keep his job. Uh, he is a hell of a recruiter. And uh, I do look for uh, USC to make a statement win after two consecutive losses and not covering the spread. I do believe USC covers the spread. Personally, I think uh, um, just by looking down and breaking the game down myself earlier this week, uh, I see USC as a two-touchdown winner. And uh, as everybody just said, touchdown Jets, 14 nothing. Sorry, I didn't mean to clap in everybody's ear. But as you can tell, I have a huge bet uh, on that game. And I could not be more excited. Oh, my God. Tampa Bay breaks open the lead. 5-2 uh, to two with runners on first and third still. And only one out top of the seventh. So hopefully Tampa Bay holds strong. Uh, and in better news, the Boston Red Sox uh, have runners on first and third with no outs. They are down 6-4 to four after giving up a grand slam to... Uh, Mr. Stanton of the Yankees, and uh, hopefully these games all turn around and the ones that are winning keep winning. But here's the better question. Nope, Sam Darnold did not get a passing touchdown just yet. Um, Isaiah Crawwell with a second uh, touchdown run. Yes, Brian, uh, USC is at home at the Memorial Coliseum tomorrow night. Uh, they're going to have, you know, 95,000 fans in that stadium. They packed that stadium so full at the Coliseum. If you've never been to a game at the uh, Memorial Coliseum, before they ever rebuild it, tear it down, whatever they decide to do with that sucker in the future, you have to go. The atmosphere, the history, the prestige, the sound of being in the Coliseum, USC has that home team, uh, the home field advantage 100% whenever they play in the Coliseum. Hell, even when they go to the Rose Bowl, uh, they still have a home field advantage. Uh, absolutely, Nathaniel Tyrod is absolute trash. Uh, I've said it all week. I said it last week. Uh, I don't know why everybody was giving Tyrod Taylor and the Browns so much credit this week. All right? I can go over here. Here's some uh, a consensus report from Pro Football. Matt Yeomans gave uh, the uh, the Browns a win today. The betters rating has the Browns to win today. Uh, let's see who else. I mean, I can go on and on. Uh, Jonathan Van Tobel's got the Browns to win. One of his best bets of the week. He's got the Browns to cover the three games. Everybody, and absolutely everybody. Josh Towers. And VSIN has the Browns as one of his best bets of the week. Everybody has been riding the Browns this week. I got news for you. Yeah. They hung tough with the Saints. They hung tough the first week against the Steelers. They are still trash. Now, just because they got rid of Josh Gordon is not going to help define who they are. When you get rid of, arguably, one of the best receivers in all of the NFL, for whatever reason it may be, you're still going to be trash. Now, we have seen before the Browns do make a, a, a comeback. This game is very early and anything can happen in pro football. But, my, you know, the Jets may, may, may lose the game. They may not cover the spread. But, in my personal opinion, and as, you know, the company at Capra's Direct, we gave out the Jets and the over that game. So I do like to see it 14 nothing preferably I'd like to see it 28 nothing before the half. At least 21 nothing. You know, I can see a big Jets uh, defense uh, defensive play coming up. So hopefully they hold strong. And yes, um, 
Nathaniel, Josh Gordon uh, heading to uh, New England. He makes the Patriots a heavy favorite again. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, what his role is going to be there. It's too early to tell. I'll be honest. I, I actually have him on my fantasy football team. I only play in one league. It's a thousand dollar buy-in, um, and a hundred dollars per move. It's a big money game or big money league. I actually have Josh Gordon uh, in my league, um, but I also have Julie. Uh, I also have Edelman, who's uh, serving a four-game suspension. Um, but when they get Edelman back and they got Gordon, uh, he's a sharp receiver. He is a sharp individual. It'll take him a week or two to pick up the plays and uh, to get into rhythm with Tom Brady. But uh, watch out. The uh, Patriots receiving core is getting healthy. He is absolute, uh, abs I mean, the, the Patriots, their receiving core is getting healthy. Wait until week five. Absolutely, uh, as Gary just said, come on. Boston. Uh, Boston is one of our plays today. They knocked in one. It's five to six. Boston down by one. Uh, nobody on. Two outs. We could take a Bo Garrett's home run here. Did somebody just say Baker Mayfield is in the game? Because the last update that I got says Tyrod Taylor passed to the left. Somebody just posted in the comments. JSN just posted in the comments that Baker Mayfield is in, but I haven't seen any... Uh... Oh, I don't know why JSN posted that Baker Mayfield is in. Um, I didn't think so, because the uh, updates that I see is Tyron Taylor keeps uh, uh, throwing incomplete passes. So, uh, fine by me. Tyron Taylor has completed two of ten passes. Gary, you've got which game over? The uh, Jets and uh, Browns game over? All right, jumping into our second game that we're going to break down. Clemson versus Georgia Tech. Bobby Dodd Stadium at Grant Field, Atlanta, Georgia. 3.30 Eastern time on Saturday. Be aired live on ABC. Game 3.37 and 3.38. Clemson favored by uh, 15 and a half points. That line still sits at 15 and a half. Total opened up at 51. It's sitting at 51 and a half. It's gone up a half a point right now. I got you, Gary. I wish you the best of luck on, uh, oh, you already won that bet, but we all need Boston. Um, Clemson is 3-0 straight up, 0-3 against the spread to start the year. They are not a good team to bet on as of yet. All right, Georgia Tech is 1-2 straight up, and as well, 0-3 against the spread. Some top team trends between Clemson and Georgia Tech. Clem uh, Georgia Tech is 21-12-2 against the spread. Their last 35 games as an underdog of more than seven points. Uh, Clemson is just 2-4-1 and one against the spread their last seven games against high-scoring teams averaging 32 points per game or more. Clemson is 8-0 and oh on the under against decent passing defenses yielding less than 6.5 yards per attempt. Home to, or uh, sorry, head-to-head -head trends between Clemson and Georgia Tech. Home teams are 7-1 and one straight up, 6-1 and one against the spread in the last eight games between Clemson and Georgia Tech. All right, guys, these two teams faced off last year, end of October, in Clemson, with Clemson winning 24-10. to uh, That was a push. Line on that game had uh, Clemson favored by 14. Uh, Clemson gets to face uh, the triple option for a second week in a row after beating Georgia Southern and their triple, ed op triple threat option last week 38 to 7. They're already primed. They're already prepared for the triple threat, and they don't have to change any of their drills up. All right. Um, normally, when a team's got a triple threat uh, option team uh, on the schedule that week before, they've got some uh, special drills and planning they have to do for the triple threat. Uh, they just had tri the triple threat last week, and they're very, very well prepared for it. Um, 
They struggled early uh, last week. Clemson struggled early last week against Georgia Southern, but they came out that second half and they put the gas to the pedal and they beat. They did not cover the spread, but they won 38 to seven. All right. Um, Clemson held Georgia Southern to just 83 yards of rushing uh, last week on 43 rush attempts. Yes, 43 rush attempts and just 83 yards on the ground for Georgia Southern. Um, and they only allowed seven first downs. Um, Clemson's got Syracuse next week in Death Valley, uh, and it's going to be an undefeated matchup between the ACC. Um, and uh, one thing that can definitely get Clemson in trouble is looking ahead to next week. Now, taking a look at Clemson and Georgia Tech, Clemson's offense is averaging 287 yards in the air, 226 on the ground. Georgia Tech is averaging 118 yards passing per game and uh, absolutely rushing the ball at 393 yards over their first three games on average on the ground. Clemson defense just averaging 179 yards, uh, giving up 179 yards in the air and only 89 yards on the ground. So I look forward to seeing how uh, Georgia Tech is able to, gonna, if, if they're able to rush against the Clemson defense. Um, Georgia Tech is averaging, allowing 156 yards in the air and only 146 on the ground as well. Free lean on this game. Uh, I do believe that Clemson goes into Georgia Tech better prepared for the triple threat. And that gas will be on the pedal the entire game. Free lean on that game, Clemson minus 15 and a half. If you want to know more in depth about that game, tune in live Saturday morning. Also, tune in live Saturday morning where we discuss Notre Dame and Wake Forest when we break down that game and tell you the reason why I have Notre Dame on upset alert. All right, guys. Nathaniel, your phone is dying and so is my voice. We don't have much longer. We've got about a half hour to go. Uh, also, tune in live Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, where we break down number seven, Stanford, against number 20, Oregon, and find out why we also have Stanford on upset alert. I will have a free play on that game on Saturday as well. We're going to, guys, on Saturday morning and Sunday morning, we're going to have a ton of free stuff for you guys. Free games. Leans. You name it. We're going to have it. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into the, uh, into the NFL. But first, enjoy this quick 30-second break. In the NFL, where we're going to be breaking down a couple NFL games for you guys, and we will make you a more. Whoa! And I'm not sure how we started playing that video. I'm not sure what the hell happened. But we are back, and hopefully you guys all can hear me. And I absolutely love to hear that Tampa Bay is leading 8-2, to two middle, going into the bottom of the 7th. Absolutely love to hear that. Tampa Bay is one of our big premium plays. It was actually our first big premium play of the day for all of our premium play members. All right, guys, let's jump right into the NFL. Indianapolis Colts facing off against 
the Philadelphia Eagles. The betting public absolutely loves the Eagles. And I'm going to tell you why I don't. So stick around, guys, because we're jumping right into it. Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 9. One of the first games in the morning game, 461 and 462. Colts versus the Eagles. Line on the game's got Philadelphia favored by a touchdown. Opened up as a touchdown favorite. That line is down a half a point to six and a half. And guys, we're going to see some line movement. That line is going to go back up to seven, maybe even higher. All right, guys? Now, and I'm going to break that down on the reason why, okay? Uh, the over and under opened up at 48. It is currently sitting at 47 and a half. Uh, the Colts are one and one straight up, one and one against the spread. The Eagles, exact same. One and one straight up and one and one against the spread. Top team trends. The Colts are 19, 8 and 1 against the spread, dating back to the year 2000 on the road against stout rushing defenses yielding less than 3.6 yards per carry. Philadelphia is just 1 and 6 against the spread their last seven games after they play Tampa Bay. Philadelphia is 7 and 0 their last seven games versus the AFC South. Head to head. Head to head is over the total is 6 and 0 the last 6 games in this matchup. The last 6 times the Colts and the Eagles have faced each other, that game has gone over 6 times straight. All right? Now, they haven't played each other since 2014. So, be careful. We need Atlanta as well. So, we're all rooting for Atlanta. We're all rooting for the Braves, the Red Sox, because we all hate the Yankees. And Tampa Bay, baby, Tampa Bay. All right, before we get into the more information, let's see on that NFL game. Three minutes left in the second. Jets are winning 14 to nothing. And I do believe somebody updated. Yep, Temple is winning 28 to 10 with 11:07 left to go in the third. Let's keep those points going. Absolutely, Russ. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Carson Wentz is back. He changes not only the dynamics but the look of the Philadelphia Eagles this week. Uh, the road team has won the last four out of five meetings. Take note. The road team has won the last four out of five meetings between these two teams. All right, guys. As the defending champs got completely shredded through the air last week by Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Buccaneers, a strong pass rush is going to be very crucial for the Eagles in their Week 3 matchup against Andrew Locke and the Colts. Jay Oakland's got to get a win sooner or later. Now, like I was saying, the, the Eagles need to have a strong pass rush if they don't want to get shredded by Andrew Luck, just like they did Ryan Fitzpatrick last week. Uh, the Colts suspect, or sorry, they're, uh, they're, their offensive line is very suspect, all right? Uh, and this percent, uh, presents a very good opportunity uh, for the Eagles' stacked defensive line uh, to have an absolute field day against Andrew Luck and put him on his uh, on his rear. Um, if if the Colts' offensive line can keep uh, Andrew Luck uh, on his feet long enough and protect him, the fans and betters like myself, we could be in store for a shootout come Sunday. Yes. The return of Carson's, uh, Carson Wentz is sure to add some questions. All right? Uh, the Eagles are a much different team with Carson Wentz under center. Um, no doubt about it, he is the better quarterback between him and Nick Foles. Um, Jay Ajahi uh, and the rest of the running backs for the Eagles, um, they're going to be very uh, important to ensure Carson Wentz has a smooth transition back to game day speed. He hasn't played a game since last year. He's not up to speed. And if the Eagles can't establish the run, 
the Colts could keep Carson Wentz uh, at bay and uh, make it very tough for him to get into a nice rhythm. Now, the Colts are averaging 22 points per game. The Eagles are averaging scoring 19.5 points per game. The Colts are allowing 21.5 points per game, while the Eagles are still only allowing 19.5. The Colts' offense is averaging 241 yards in the air and only 89 on the ground. The Eagles' offense is averaging 220 in the air under Nick Foles. I think that will change this next week. Rushing, they're averaging 102 yards per game. The Colts' defense is averaging, allowing 249 yards per game in the air, as well as only 83 yards on the ground. So I love to see the Colts be able to keep Jay Ajahi and the rest of the running backs for the Eagles at bay. The Eagles' defense getting shredded in the air, averaging, sorry, allowing, on average, 309 yards of offense in the air so far over three games. However, they've stopped the rush by just allowing 58 yards. All right, guys. I look to see this line go back up to seven or higher. The public is going to be hammering the Eagles, no doubt about it. Uh, everybody on the East Coast, uh, you know, the bandwagon fans that, you know, were never Eagles fans, they won the Super Bowl, and now they're fans. Um, the Eagles are, you know, a favorite of betters the last year. I look for the uh, the general public and the general population to push that line higher. When they push that line higher, I look to make a nice wager on the Colts plus seven. Um, free lean if that line goes to seven. I mean, I like the Colts anyways uh, against the Eagles. I like the matchup. I like that uh, Carson Wentz is not up to game speed. If this game was played in week five or six or seven or later in the season, uh, you may have a different opinion coming out of my mouth. Um, but uh, taking place this week, this Sunday, I like the Colts as a nice lean. Uh, I will have a nice free play for everybody on this game come Sunday as well. All right, we got a couple more to break down. NFL Sunday, and remember, guys, tune in live Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern, where we will be breaking down all things sports betting in the NFL only, and we're going to go over many, many, many games, including many free plays and many leans. All right, guys, 1 p.m. Eastern, televised on Fox. Game 467 and 468 for betting purposes. New Orleans Saints face off against the Atlanta Falcons, Mercedes-Benz, uh, stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta opened up as a three and a half point favorite. That line is now down to three. They're just a or sorry, just a field goal favorite. Uh, total over and under 53 and a half is where it opened. It is down a half a point to 53 currently all over Vegas. The Saints are one and one straight up and 0 oh and two against the spread. If you've bet against the spread on the Saints the last two weeks, you are down and down big. All right, the Falcons are 1-1 one one straight up and 1-1 one one against the spread. Top team trends between the Saints and the Falcons. Uh, the Saints are 12-4-2 against the spread their last five years against opponents after a conference straight-up win. Atlanta is just 1-9 against the spread their last 10 games at home against weak defensive teams, allowing more than 24 and a half points per game. New Orleans is 8 and 1 on the under their last 9 games before playing the New York Giants. Now, head to head trends. Under the total is 8 and 2 in their last 10 meetings between the Saints and the Falcons. 8 and 2 on the under in their last 10 meetings. Take that trend and let me know what you think about it. Now, they did meet twice Sorry, they met once last year. Uh, end of the season. No, nope, I'm sorry. I take that back. They met twice last year. Both in December. Both games were won by the home team. 
Their last meeting was in New Orleans. New Orleans won 23 to 10. Uh, earlier in the month of December last year, Atlanta beat New Orleans in Atlanta 20 to 17. The Falcons had a nice bounce back win last week, beating the Panthers in Atlanta 31 to 24. However, they still have not solved the problem of getting the ball in Julio Jones's hands. If you've got Julio Jones on your fantasy team, I'm sorry. You just haven't had any production. Hopefully, they're able to fix that this week and get the ball to Julio Jones. Uh-oh. I did see an update on Twitter by Rich uh, Simmons that Tyrod Taylor is in the injury tent. We Will we see Baker Mayfield? Well, Daniel just said we need more points. Well, I guess you should suit up and get in the game. Baker Mayfield goes in, you're going to see more points. How about that? Temple leading 28 to 10, driving the ball at the Tulsa 34 with a first and 10. All right, guys, back to the Saints versus the Falcons. Um, Sean Payton's squad is just 10 and 5 as a regular season underdog the past two years. And the Saints stayed under the total with the Falcons in both meetings last year. The under is 8-1 and one in Atlanta games since last year. Dating back last year uh, to last year, Atlanta's 8-1 and one on the under in all their games. Crazy things have happened before between these two teams. And it is also the NFL. You have two professional teams playing. Anything, anything can happen. It is easy to assume that Matt Ryan and Drew Brees could end up in a shootout. I mean, it could be a 35-28 final. It could be a 28-24 final. My opinion, and my opinion only, I look for both defenses in a major run attack by both teams to slow the game down and definitely slow scoring. The Saints, however, are averaging 30 and a half points per game scored while allowing 33 themselves. The Falcons are averaging 21 and a half points per game while giving up only 21. The Saints offense is averaging 322 yards in the air with Drew Brees, while only allowing, or sorry, only averaging 52 yards a game on the ground. Uh, both their games have been shootouts, and they've been forced to throw the ball. The Falcons' offense is averaging 248 yards in the air and 122 on the ground. The Saints' defense has given up an average of 325 yards in the air as well as 122, sorry, 102 on the ground. Uh, as everybody's pointed out, Baker Mayfield is in the game. Hopefully, he scores a few points or a few touchdowns, but the Jets score more. Uh, the Falcons defense is averaging, allowing 218 yards in the air per game, as well as allowing 117 yards on average on the ground. Free lean on this game. If you ask me right now, I'm taking the under the total points. Under 53 as a free lean. You want to know more facts? Tune in live Sunday morning. All right. The next game we're going to break down. The Green Bay Packers versus the Washington Redskins. FedEx Field. Landover, Maryland. Game 475 and 476. Green Bay favored by two and a half when the line opened. They're now favored by a field goal. At line has gone up a half a point in all of Vegas. They are now minus three. Total opened up at 47 and a half. It is now down two points to 45 and a half.
Temple in the red zone. Temple alert in the red zone. All right, guys. The Packers are 1-0-1. Oh, Straight up and 1-1 one, and one against the spread. The Redskins are 1-1 one, and one, straight up and 1-1 one, and one against the spread. Green Bay, top team trends. Green Bay is 6-1 against the spread. Their last seven games on the road against opponents before their bye week. The Redskins are 9-19-4, dating back until the season 2000 at home in September. Green Bay is 14-1 on the over on the road when they play on Sundays. Head-to-head -head trends, Green Bay is 6-2 straight up and 5-2 and against the spread their last eight games against Washington. Green Bay has owned Washington straight up and against the spread in their last eight meetings. Man, everybody's going to go nuts if Baker Mayfield gets a touchdown on the first drive. But it looks like they're not with a four, fourth and two. Maybe they go for it. Oh, nope. They kick a field goal 14-3. to three. We get some more points with 23 seconds left on the clock. Unfortunately, unless the Jets get a big run back, which they're probably not going to with the new kickoff rules, uh, they're probably going to go out there and just down the ball and go into the halftime with a 14 to 3 lead. All right, back to the Packers and the Redskins. The over is 3 and 0 oh in the last 3 games that they've met. The over is 3 and 0 oh in the last 3 meetings. The home team has won 2 of the last 3. The favorite has won 2 of the last 3. Last time they faced off, two years ago in 2016, they faced off once. 2015 season, they played January 2016 in the playoffs. All right, last time they played, the Redskins did beat the Packers in 2016, 42-24. Aaron Rodgers is listed as day-to-day -day with a knee injury. He said it's probably going to progress and get worse throughout the season. He did not practice today. All right, Aaron Rodgers did not practice today. However, from what I was told, he is not going to miss the game. Brian, nothing on the CFL today, um, but I will add it into the show for you uh, Canadians next week. It's just uh, too much to talk about this week, and uh, we're already nearing the two-hour mark. But I will, uh, I will make a note to put something in there for the CFL um, for this week. But if you, if you guys want a nice little free play on Canadian football um, for Saturday, uh, I personally, myself, um, I like the under in the Edmonton um, auto. Sorry, Ed, yeah, the Edmonton Ottawa game on Saturday morning. Sorry, Saturday afternoon, my time, one o'clock. Um, I do like uh, the under. I think it's 54, 54 and a half. I do like the under in that Canadian Football League game. Um, but back to the Packers and the Redskins. Um, I do believe Aaron Rodgers will be playing. He did not practice today, but he will be playing the game. Um, Washington's offense has not been, uh, uh, you know, they, they haven't been bad uh, with Alex Smith at, at quarterback. They're averaging 258 uh, yards uh, in the air and 123 yards on the uh, on the ground. Um, so far this season, uh, the Redskins, six straight unders since the end of last season. Now, Glenn, that is the update I want to see. The Boston Red Sox just tied the game 6-6. Six to six. Let's go Red Sox clinch that division in Yankee Stadium. That would be nice. Fourth and goal for Temple. From the Tulsa 7. And they miss a 24-yard field goal. Aye, aye, aye. We need 16 more points to push that total over. That would have been a nice three points. 
But either way, Temple still got an 18-point lead. And uh, hopefully they hold on strong. Um, I personally look uh, to see Jay Gruden. Uh, he's going to have Alex Smith attack uh, the Packers in the air, just as Kirk Cousins did last week. Uh, he took Kirk Cousins took full advantage of the Green Bay Packers in their comeback last week. All right. Um, and, and I look for the same thing from uh, Jay Gruden and Alex Smith this week. Um, the Aaron Rodgers factor, if he's going to play or not, will definitely affect how I bet this game. All right. The Packers with Aaron Rodgers are averaging 26 and a half points uh, per game so far. Uh, while only allowing 26, the Redskins are only averaging scoring 16 and a half points per game, while their defense has only given up less than two touchdowns at 13 and a half yards per game. The Packers' offense is averaging 277 yards in the air with Aaron Rodgers still hurt. All right, they're only averaging 83 yards on the ground. Uh, the Redskins' offense with Alex Smith at quarterback, which was a big pick me upper for the Redskins, is averaging 258 yards in the air and 123 yards on the ground so far this year. The Packers defense has uh, given up on average 283 yards in the air and 103 yards on the ground. The Packers defense has been picked apart in the air. I look for that to happen again. But if Aaron Rodgers is in, no doubt about it, they hang tough. All right, guys, uh, the Redskins defense is averaging, giving up only 161 yards in the air and 86 on the ground. Uh, as far as a free lean or a free play, you have to wait until Sunday to see if Aaron Rodgers is playing. Any early betting, you're only speculating. If you're going to bet on Green Bay, that line is at minus three right now. That is a good line to bet if Aaron Rodgers plays. Callie Niner, welcome to the show, bud. Um, it is a short stack today because the NFL is going on. Maybe we need to move our show to Wednesday nights. That way we get a better view, uh, better reception. Um but back to uh, betting on the Packers. If you're going to bet it now, and it comes out, and you bet the Packers now, and it comes out that he's not playing, be prepared to bet the opposite way to come. Not sure what just happened with the feed. All right. Are you guys still there? Is everybody watching? Everything good? I don't know what happened. But it just said my feed ended. Okay, we're still here. But anyways, if you're betting on... Right now, you bet on Green Bay. I think minus three is an absolute great line. But if it comes out Sunday morning, last minute, that Aaron Rodgers isn't playing, be prepared to bet the other way and the under. All right, guys? That's my advice. Uh, we will break down this game more in depth Sunday night. Sorry, not Sunday night. Sunday morning. Uh, and find out if Aaron Rodgers is playing. However, I do believe he will be playing. All right, I do believe he will be playing. Now, remember, guys, if you're not betting our system plays, I encourage you. The season is ending. Our system plays are winding down. However, they are 72 and 3. 72 and 3 on our system plays. We are running a special this week. This weekend, where you can get our system plays for one full week for $199. Every one of our system plays for $199. That special will be on the website later tonight. You can take advantage of it if you're not already betting them. All right? Tampa Bay, not only was it a premium play, but it was a system play. So that is going, we double dipped. I double dipped. Our clients that are betting both all double dipped. So when that game closes out and wins, we will now be 73 and 3. All right. We've got the Red Sox on there. The Red Sox win. 
Uh, we add one to the win column. If they lose, we're going to notch our fourth loss on the season. But I got faith in the Red Sox. They're going to pull out another win and keep us victorious. All right? So hopefully they keep our win streak alive, which is at 22 straight wins. Um, if you guys want to, and I said this earlier, if you buy one month of our system place for $749, I will give you the rest of the system plays all the way through the playoffs and the World Series absolutely free. All right, guys? And if you've never been with us before, our new client special, you get one full week of our premium plays, one full week of our system plays, normally $1,000 a week for our premium plays, $600 a week for our system plays. You're going to get both packages for just $299. The only way to get the new client special is you have to call in. All right, guys. So with that being said, we are on our two-hour mark. Thank you for everybody that tuned in. I know it is a busy night. Thursday night football, you got to love it. Um, the, the Yankees and the Red Sox still tied. Six to six, but the uh, Red Sox got a runner on first with one out. The Nationals are tied four to four with the Mets. The Tampa Bay Rays are winning bottom of the ninth. Eight to two. The Tigers are beating the Royals 11 to 7. And the Braves enter the bottom of the seventh, tied seven to seven, or sorry, tied three to three. And they're now in the seventh inning stretch. In other news, Temple has the ball back and they're driving the ball. Sorry. They just got the ball back on a punt. First and 10 from their own 35. Leading 28 to 10, 31 seconds left in the third. The New York Jets, Cleveland Browns tied 14 to 3. They're tied. What am I talking about? Uh, New York Jets, Cleveland Browns, halftime, 14 to 3. Our Jets are winning. We gave out the Jets and the over. So Jets, Jets, Jets. Hopefully the Jets come out, score a couple more touchdowns, and Baker Mayfield puts a couple in the air as well. And I'm hoping for a 35-17 final, 35-21. Probably won't happen, but we're going to hold strong. All right, guys, I'm going to go and watch the end of these games. We're going to break down the rest of what we've got going for tomorrow. Guys, stick around. We're going to later on tonight, we'll post tomorrow's free play video with another college football winner for you guys. Uh, if you guys missed the free baseball play that I gave out for tomorrow, there is a free baseball play in this video. If you're watching the archive version, just scroll back in the Major League Baseball segment. There's a free baseball play in it. That's what I like to hear. The Red Sox, as Russ just said, runners on second and third with one out. Tie game six to six. Bases loaded, one out. All we need is a walk, a single, a double, a sacrifice, fly, anything. Let's go. All right, guys. Now, thank you all for tuning in. We do need to thank our sponsors. Without our sponsors and our haters, this would not be possible. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Our next show will again air next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And remember, Saturday, Sunday Live 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, we'll be going down, going live, breaking down college football and the NFL on Sunday, making you a more successful sports better. All right, guys, I am Kyle. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you guys soon. Are you ready? Are you ready for the thrill of victory? Are you ready to taste victory? Are you ready to take your sports betting to a whole new level? Sit up, put your feet on the floor, because we have work to do. Welcome to the grind. Welcome to Cappers Nation, your weekly all things sports betting show. Tune in live every Thursday at 8 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern.
Let us make you a more successful sports better. Welcome to Cappers Nation, your weekly all things sports gambling show. I am your host, Kyle Johnson, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to the show, guys. 